it's your boy Aaron, y'all, and today, thank you for watching The Tribe of Adam. You are watching The Tribe of Adam. However, if you have not already liked, share, and subscribed to this video, make sure you do it. Like, share, and subscribe to the video, and also click the bell notification so that you can know when we post new videos so you can be a part of The Tribe of Adam. Once again, I thank you all. Those of you that have subscribed within the last week or so, thank you for subscribing to the video. We're actually on the road to 100 subscribers. It's not that big for some people, but for me, that's a big thing. So I thank you all, and I want you all to tell your friends, make sure you share it, and just make The Tribe of Adam a household name, okay? Now, today, 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 I have something special for you all. Today, I am doing a cooking vlog. Now, for those of you that know me, some of you don't know, but for those of you that do know, I'm a cook for for Thanksgiving, um, for any holiday, birthday, celebrations, whatever. I'm most of the time the one that's in the kitchen cooking. So, I learned to cook, of course, from my father. He was a great cook within his own right. And then my grandfather, for those of you that know, that man is a cooking man. I don't even know why he doesn't have a restaurant. And you all stay tuned because I will be getting a cooking vlog from him. I'm going to ask him to do a cooking vlog and I'm going to record him cooking all his famous, you know, recipes and all that stuff. So you all stay tuned to that. So that gives you a reason to want to subscribe to this channel and watch the channel. Anyways, like I said, today I'm going to be cooking for you all. And yeah, so I just want y'all, as I always say, stay tuned, stay lit, stay live with the Travel Battle as we come forth and bring forth a lot of more videos for your household during this quarantine time because I know a lot of you are in the house and a lot of you, you know, you don't really have uh, nothing to do for real, for real. So why not subscribe to the channel? Why not watch the Tribe of Adam? And hopefully, one day, I can get my siblings in here. We can all do something. You know, my sister-in-law, Mel, she cooks as well. She makes good desserts. She makes a mean cheesecake. And AJ, my brother, my eldest brother, my only brother, he can cook. So, and Jessica, she can bake it and cook in her own right. And Chanel, she can wash some good dishes. No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. No, Chanel can cook. Chanel can cook as well. We all can cook. So, hopefully one day I can get us all in the kitchen. And my mother, she can cook as well. Most of the time when my father was, when my father didn't cook, most of the time my mom cooked. So, all of us can cook. We come from a household of cooks. We all can cook and all of that. So, hopefully one day I can uh, get, bring us all together. So we can all get in the kitchen and cook, and y'all can see what we got to bring to the table. All right. So as always, say, stay tuned, stay lit, stay live with the tribe of Adam. However, today, you all, what I'm going to be cooking, I want y'all to sit attentively because what I'm going to be cooking today is something I went, I thought about it yesterday. I was like, I'm gonna go ahead and cook because I, I haven't cooked for real, for real in a while. So I said, I'm gonna go ahead and cook. So today, what I'm be cooking, I'm gonna be cooking a buttermilk chicken, which is right here. I had it uh, marinating overnight which I normally don't cook buttermilk chicken. I normally just fried chicken, you know, the regular way. I want to try something different. So I said I'm going to do a buttermilk style chicken, you know, with my seasons and all that stuff. I let it sit overnight and marinate and, you know, all that good stuff. So I'm going to cook a buttermilk chicken with some gravy and onions. And then I'm going to cook some homemade, um, what do you call it? I'm going to cook some homemade uh, mashed potatoes. Uh, I got my water stuff bo boiling over there. So homemade mashed potatoes. Um, what else? Oh, macaroni and cheese, homemade macaroni and cheese, homemade cornbread, what else? Um, oh, and some, I was gonna either do broccoli or string beans. I'm, I'm still debating about which one I should do. So it's between those two, but that's all that I'm cooking. So, you all, of course I have all my utensils sitting on the counter. I have, you know, my spoons and uh, I think it's called a spatula, I think, I think. Um, I have my, you know, my can opener to open up my milks and my cream corn. I have my potato peeler and my bowl set. My bowl. I got my strainer. Um, got my pans. So I'm ready. So as y'all, as I always say, you all stay tuned, stay lit, stay live. Before I get into the cooking part of the vlog, make sure you like the video and make sure you subscribe to the Tribe of Adam and make sure you share it so that everybody can be a part. Don't be selfish. I know we're a good family and I know you all enjoy these vlogs, but don't be selfish. Make sure you subscribe. So that everybody can enjoy the travel battle. Alright, let's get into um, it. Let's get started. First, like I said, I'm going to put my noodles inside the pots over here. And I'm going to cut up my uh, potatoes. And I'm going to put those in the pot as well. So you all, stay tuned with me as I begin to cut and do what I got to do. Alright. All right, 
I'm back. So now, as I said before, now what you want to do, and make sure when you're cutting your potatoes, I washed them off nice and clean, make sure you use a sharp knife so it makes the work less, you know, strainous on you. Use a sharp knife and just cut them in, you know, nice, nice sized pieces so they could cook down faster, you know. So that's what we're going to do now, just cut these up. So as I said, you just want to come and rinse off your potatoes. And I have it in the strainer. Rinse them off real good. Make sure you do it real good. Get all the, you know, just, to, just in case there's any dirt left on them or anything like that. You just want to rinse them off real good. All right. And yes, I forgot to tell you all. I do have, I did rinse off my potatoes. I just showed you all that. But while that was going, I do have my noodles for my macaroni and cheese going so while you're cooking it's important that you multitask and have different things going so in the end everything will be done around about the same time you know you want to make sure you cook all of the things that take a little bit longer to cook you know that that's supposed to be ran in the oven you know you want to make sure you cook that stuff first and get it on out the way so by the time you know you fry your chicken or make your cornbread it'll be you know everything will come out around about the same time so, I love so i'm just gonna pour those in the strainer Make sure you get them all out the pot because we don't waste. Get them all out the pot. noodles washed off I took, them, I took them out of the strainer and now I have them in my bowl you know from where I'm going to cook from mix all the ingredients in with so with this macaroni and cheese my macaroni and cheese from what I learned from my father my grandfather all that good stuff what you want to use is you now normally of course you all know during this time um, the shelves are pretty much empty so I normally would use the, the cheese that comes in a glass can but since they didn't have any I'm going to use Velveeta block cheese. It still does the same same thing, you know, but this is what they had left in the store. So I'm going to use Velveeta block cheese. And then I was watching some other vloggers. Now, normally I would use 2% milk on my macaroni and cheese, but because um, I seen other vloggers use your uh, evaporated milk, pet milk, or uh, carnation milk, I decided, I said, I'm going to try this out and I'm going to use evaporated milk on you know my macaroni and cheese they say it gives it a buttery taste so i'm going to see how that is you know it can't do but so much harm to it if not it'll help it out so as i said i'm gonna, I'm gonna try this out and and use that and also you want to get your extra sharp now most people use sharp cheese but if you really want to taste your macaroni and cheese use extra sharp cheese with it and then you want to get your lowry seasoned salt and also mustard now i know a lot of y'all i threw y'all off when i said mustard but this actually adds a good flavor to your macaroni and cheese you know if you know what you're doing and know how much to put in it so i'm gonna show you all step by step what i put in my macaroni and cheese and how i make my macaroni and cheese all right all right so now that i have my cheese and stuff and i'm ready to show you all what i put in it you just want to open up your velveeta cheese like i said normally i will use the liquid cheese but they didn't have any so i had to do what i had to do so you just want to put that cheese all over. Now this is a small one. They sell the bigger one, but the small one, you can put the whole thing in there. And it it will melt down. Now you might want to, for those of you that, you know, that's just extra, extra, you might want to cut it in there so it could be evenly through. So I just try to cut it the best I can in there. I think that's good right there. Yeah, you just want to cut it in there. And then um, let's put your milk in there. Normally I would put my milk in first but this time I didn't. So let's go ahead and put our milk in. This is one can of milk. Put all your milk in there. Yeah, let's do, uh, let's try half a can, and then let's see how it works, half a can. Uh, let's do it right there. So, 
So I said that right there, let's mix it. So all together, so far I put my Bellevue cheese and my milk. I'm not finished yet. I'm not finished. I'm just gonna mix as I go and kind of, you know, tell behind for me, you know, how much water I put in it, you know. So that's that. Um, now let's put my shred cheese in. Now, as I said, extra sharp, shred cheese. I'm gonna put, yeah, I'm gonna put the whole bag in there. Let's do that. All right, just mix it. Mix it in there. There we go. Mix it all through that. All right. Mix that. And as you all can see, if you all look, it's still kind of thick. So therefore, let's go ahead and pour the rest of this milk in there. We can rest we might can use three cans on it. Let's go ahead and put this can in just a little bit. This can, I might open up this can a little bit more. So let's open up this can just a little bit more. Right, there we go. So we're going to dump. We're just going to dump this milk inside of there. Some of these are going to come out slow. But just mix it around some more. See what you're getting at. Break up the block cheese. You know, break it up at your stomach. Break that up inside of the macaroni and cheese. Just so we don't get little clumps of cheese when it goes to bake. And you know, like that. Alright, so, I'm gonna put more milk in it, but just to give you all a just look, it should be real creamy because the cheese is gonna thicken it up once it gets in the oven and it starts, you know, cooking and stuff. So, now, let's put in our mustard. Let's put in our mustard. And mustard is strong, so you just wanna put a little bit, just to give it a good effect. You all can see my mustard is running low. Just a little bit. That's good, right there. Alright, um, next, let's do our seasoning. So, now, this, according to your taste, now, with me, I like my macaroni and cheese. I like it seasoned. Now, not salty, but seasoned. You just wanna mix it all in. Some people put sugar in their macaroni and cheese. I don't necessarily do that, but, um, yeah, just gonna mix it all in. And that's all the ingredients. Now, some people put eggs in the macaroni and cheese to help it, you know, turn it into more of a casserole. Because the cheese will, you know, combine it all together. And the, the milk, and once it all gets in the oven, you know, you really don't need to put eggs in it. So, I think I'm going to put a little bit more cheese in mine. And a little bit more milk. So, that's just a just, that's just a just of, you know, macaroni and cheese and my macaroni and cheese that I do. You can put other stuff in your macaroni and cheese. This is just, um, you know, something quick. And it still tastes good. I say put the seasoning in. And always, 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 when you're cooking, always taste as you go. Just so you know, you know, what you need to put in it, how much more, how much, you know, what you're good on, what you're not good on. So, that's just a just. Uh, you know, that's just a just of macaroni and cheese. I'm going to put a little bit more milk in this just so it can get a more creamier, you know, look. And it doesn't look like macaroni and cheese. And then after I stir it up, put my, my extra stuff in it, cheese will be ready to run out. Alright? Alright. So, after you so as you all can see, I poured my macaroni and cheese inside of my, you know, my pans. Now I had a better pan, but it was a little bit too small and I had bigger pans, but I didn't feel like dealing in those today. So I just poured them in two styrofoam, I'm going to wear aluminum rather, two alum aluminum uh, pans. Now, once it gets in the oven, it's going to, you know, the color is going to get there and it's going to look, look good. So right now it looks kind of, you know, pale, but. I promise you all, it tastes good. And once it bakes down, the color is going to get there and it's going to rip, look real good. So I'm going to put these inside of my oven and let it have its way. All right. Peace. All right. So now I have my potatoes. They're done. I just took them out of the pot, strained them, and they're ready. They're nice and soft. So what you want to do, you just like I said, with this also, you can use your pet milk or, you know, your uh, carnation milk, evaporated milk, or you can use 2% milk. So like I said, with this, I'm just going to use my uh, evaporated milk. So we're just going to pour that in there like this. Just enough, like I said, to make it creamy and, you know, to make it mashed potatoes. So.
So as I said before, the mashed potatoes, they're ready. They're done. You want to get the excess, you know, stuff off the edge with the clean paper towel. Get the excess just to make it more presentable and make it more, you know, you don't want if I see somebody with food all around the edge and stuff like that, I'm not gonna want to eat it. So just to make it presentable, you know, if you have guests, now today it's just my family over, so. Well, not even, it's just my, my siblings and my, mo my mom and my grandmother. So, that's it. You just want to wipe off the edge, right. and that's your mashed potatoes. So, she's ready. So, as I said, you can go ahead and put your covering. Now, I'm using Reynolds Wrap normally. You know, if you have a distinguished guest over, you can, uh, you know, put something more, put it in more of a nicer dish. But being that it's only us, I'm going to put it in Reynolds Wrap. And you can put it in a warm place. You can set it behind the stove or beside the stove, you know, until you're ready for it and bring it out. And at the end, I'm going to put my um, oregano over the top. I'm sorry, not oregano, my parsley. I'm going to put my parsley over the top just to give it a nice greenery and a nice uh, touch. All right, so that's my mashed potatoes. She ready. So next, you all, um, the macaroni and cheese. Let me get the camera. The macaroni and cheese is still in the oven, so we're waiting for the macaroni and cheese. Um, what's cooking now? Oh. I'm actually, I didn't tell y'all this, but let's go over here. Um, I'm cooking right here my turkey and my um, onions in the pot just first because that's where my string beans are going. And then here's the pot for my fried chicken or for my fried chicken breast, buttermilk chicken breast that I'm going to do. So, all right. So, right now, I poured in my green beans. I got that, you know, on a mm, kind of low high simmer. Um, but I got my turkey meat in there. I got onions. I got a little bit of onion power, salt, a little bit of sugar. Um, what else? Uh, you know, a bunch of my seeds. And I can't give you all my secrets. But this is my, uh, I'm going to turn up the heat just a little bit. But this is my string beans that I put on. So I just wanted to show you all that that's cooking. I'm still waiting for my macaroni and cheese. Um, all right. So as you all can see, the macaroni and cheese is done. And I told y'all it was going to get its color. Oh, that looks so good. But the macaroni and cheese is finished. We're still waiting for the string beans. And then now... Now, actually, you all, I'm going to make uh, my cornbread. So I got all the ingredients for my cornbread right here. And I'm going to make the cornbread. But for right now, let me get this macaroni and cheese out of the oven. Still waiting on my uh, string beans and that's my grease for my buttermilk chicken and then i'm gonna make my gravy and then you all it's time to eat so as i say stay tuned stay lit stay live if you have not subscribed already and you watched this video this far go subscribe if you watch this video thus far and you have not already subscribed make sure you subscribe to the video and also hit the bell notification so you can know you know when the next time i post another video another cooking vlog or another vlog period all right stay tuned stay lit stay live with tribal adam i'll be back peace all right, so we are absolutely now ready for the cornbread. So I'm gonna show you all what brand of cornbread I use. This is what I grew up on. Jiffy is the best cornbread to use. I know a lot of people, when they do cornbread, they do it from scratch. They actually use cornmeal to make like corn um, nuggets or corn fried hot water cornbread or something like that. But for the oven cornbread, Jiffy is the best. So you're just gonna pour that into your bowl. Now to feed, you know, a good amount of people, I normally use only two boxes. So you're gonna put two boxes in there. And then on the back, you're just gonna read your instructions. Simple, easy instructions. It's at, at requires one egg and one third cup of milk. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna put two eggs, cause we put two boxes in here. Two eggs. All right. That's two eggs. And then uh, get two third cups of milk. It calls for one third, but we're using two boxes. So put your milk in. All right, and then now here's for the good part. I put sweet corn in mine, cream sweet corn. You can use Del Monte or you can use whatever. You can use any type of sweet corn. You know, you can use um, Walmart, great value uh, brand. I normally use that as well, but this is good as well. So you wanna put, um, I put the whole can in here. You can put the whole can inside of your cornbread mix. And then now, this is also a good part as well. Uh, you can put your sour cream in it. Now, let me tell you something about putting sour cream and cream corn. You don't want to put too much of both in it because if you put, now let me tell you something. If you put the whole can of cream corn in it, you only need a little bit of sour cream because you don't want it, you don't want it to get in the oven and be all mushy. 
So you just put a little bit of sour cream. All the sour cream does, it just adds a lighter, fluffier flavor to it. Let's do a little bit more. So close our sour cream back up, put that to the side, and now put your sugar. Now I know a lot of people that's used to cornbread, like that's from the south, they eat cornbread with uh, salt. Now I never grew up on eating cornbread with salt. I always grew up with it sweet and it almost tasted like a cake kind of consistency. Not too sweet, but you just want to put not too much uh, salt because I remember when I first started making uh, cornbread, I would put too much sugar in it and it would like flop in the oven. Not flop, but it would like have a crater in it. So you don't want to put too much sugar in it. But as I said with that, you just want to taste as you go and just mix it all in. You see it? Just mix it all in. My grease is heating up and she's about ready now. My green beans are on low, so let's go over here. Now, this is the part that I've been waiting for. As you all know, my um, cornbread is in there. I don't want to open up the oven because I don't want the heat to come out and I don't want my cornbread to flop. So make sure when you're doing your cornbread, for those of you that's young and you know you don't know about cooking, you can't do a bunch of stomping or a bunch of, you know, around this area or your cornbread will flop or keep opening up the oven door and slamming it or your cornbread will flop and it'll be like a dip in it, a crater in it. So you just want to let that cook and you know, let that peacefully cook. But for right now, you all, let's get right here. Hold on, let me straighten up my camera. Right now, all right. This is the part that I've been waiting for. This is my buttermilk chicken. Now this, I've been having it sitting since like middle of the day yesterday and I put it in the refrigerator. So this is my chicken. So I'm just gonna get it right in there. Mix it in just a little bit. And I'm gonna put it in the grease and then put it in the fryer. It should be ready to start frying. So let me get a few pieces like this. Put it in my flour. Yep, just like so. Let that sit right there, get another one. Another piece. Put in my flour. All right, so I'm just gonna put a few pieces like that in my flour, one more. <clears throat> put it in my flour. Like that. All right, and then now, she ready to go over there in the fryer. So let me, uh, you know, just clean up just a little bit and then I'm gonna put her in the fryer.
as you all can see now you're going to get flour you know in the process of doing this so i'm just going to clean that up you know in a little bit but as you all can see you got it frying you, i put three pieces in this pan as you all can see how big this pan is that's my hand so the pan is really not that big but you don't want to crowd your grease up most people oh, let me turn the camera on me most people uh wonder why their um their chicken or whatever they're cooking comes out like soggy whatever they're frying comes out soggy or it's not really as crisp as you would like it it's because they crowd the grease you cannot crowd the grease or crowd you know your pan when you're frying chicken or you know when you're uh cooking um fry anything fried you don't want to put too much in it because then it kind of reduces the heat and you know everything's not going to cook the way you like it so make sure you know make sure everything has enough space to cook evenly and to make sure it's nice and crispy as you like it all right so as i said we're gonna let this fry i'm gonna put a top over it just to keep the heat inside and in the meantime i'm gonna go ahead and clean all that flour up all right so that's it all right so as you all can see i'm taking out my chicken let the excess grease now it's not as dark but it's gonna be smothered so it's gonna cook the rest of the way once i throw it in the oven so as you all can see I'm just drink uh letting the excess grease drip off of it but this is my chicken let me see it. that's the chicken go nice and golden brown that's it right there so you just put that got it put it in the pan So as you all can see, our cornbread looks to be done, but this is how we tell if it's actually done. So get you a butter knife and just stick it right in the center. And if it comes out clean, she ready. Let's stick it somewhere else right here. All right, come out clean a little bit. Let's stick it again. Okay, so it came out pretty much clean. I think I might let it go for maybe another five minutes or three minutes. But, as you all can see, this is the cornbread. So, I'm going to let it sit in there for a little bit longer. And, uh, yeah. Alright, so as you all can see, my cornbread is ready. So, let's get it out the oven. Let's turn the oven off because we're done with the oven. Alright, let's get over here. Alright, so that's my cornbread right there. So, what are we going to do with that? Alright, so... As you all can see, my cornbread is finished. Fresh out the oven, nice and golden brown. I stuck a knife through it, as you all saw, to make sure that it was done. It's finished. So, what we're gonna do now, I got some melted butter. I'm just gonna put it right over the top. So as you all can see, here's my fried chicken right here. I'm not done yet. I still got a couple more pieces to fry. Some frying right here. But in this pan right here, I'm going to put my gravy and my onions and saute my onions. You know, all that good stuff. So let's set up the camera so you all can see that portion right now. Like I said, I have my onions cooking. Let me get me a spatula or a spoon. I have my onions cooking. You know, just cook down just a little bit. And this is where my gravy and stuff are going. So, while that's cooking, let's back up from it just a little bit. But anyways, now, like I said, here are my onions. They're cooking right there. 
All right, and so, like I said, so most people when they're making their gravy, especially like country cooks, they make it from scratch, you know, with your flour, your grease, stuff like that. But I'm not gonna do that today. I'm gonna use your brown gravy. So I'm just gonna put that right in there with the onion. And of course, yes, we're gonna add, yes, we're gonna add water, but for the meantime, I'm just gonna put that right in there so you all can see, hold on. You all can see. And yes, I'm gonna add water to loosen this all up, but I'm gonna add that in there. And uh, let me add the water, so. All right, so as I said to this, I'm gonna add my water. see my chicken is ready my buttermilk fried chicken is ready now it's in the pot but it's missing one thing the gravy so I'm gonna go ahead and pour this gravy over top this chicken and then I'm gonna run it in the oven all right so as I always say stay tuned because it's about to go down all right so as you all can see the food is ready so we got cornbread and then we have the homemade mashed potatoes and then we have the green beans. And then we have the macaroni and cheese, which is the best part to me. And then we have our smothered pork, um, I almost said pork chop, smothered chicken, smothered buttermilk fried chicken. So this is all the food. So we ready. All right, so as I always say, you all, as I always, hold on, let me get my camera straight. So, as I always say, make sure you stay tuned, stay lit, stay live to the Tribe of Adam. If you want me to do more cooking vlogs, make sure you like and make sure you subscribe and make sure you share this video so everybody can enjoy these cooking vlogs and these vlogs, period. Now, that, like I said, the next vlog or the next cooking vlog that I'm going to do, I'm going to try to get my granddad in the kitchen because that man, y'all think I can cook, but that man, that's where we all get it from. So, like I always say, stay tuned, stay lit, stay live to the Tribe of Adam and we about to enjoy all this love and goodness. All right, we gone. Peace.